Welcome to another Joe's Productions video. Today we're taking a look at the Southern Colonies, roughly from 1588 to 1733. And as always, no matter which A-Push book you are using, this video is going to help you with all the important content. So it's important to keep in mind that England is a little bit slow to the colonization game. It wasn't until after England defeats the Spanish Armada in 1588 that England is really in a position of being powerful enough to challenge the other countries, especially Spain, and to begin the process of planting colonies. English colonization is going to be different for a variety of reasons, but one important one to keep in mind is that England was a Protestant country. We learned about in world history the Protestant Reformation, and England was a Protestant country, whereas Spain was largely Catholic. It's important to note the different types of colonies, how they're going to be paid for, and how they are run. For example, you have joint stock companies where stockholders invest in a company, such as the Virginia Company of London, and they share in the potential profits or losses from the colony. This can also be referred to as a corporate colony. Another type of colony you're going to see is a proprietorship where a land is given by the king to an individual or to a group of individuals. And then finally a royal colony. It's paid for and ruled directly by the monarchy. England's first attempt at colonization is not going to go well. The colony of Roanoke under Sir Walter Raleigh in 1587 in what is today North Carolina. In fact, Walter Raleigh goes back to Europe and when some individuals return in 1590, the colony is found to be deserted. All of the men and women are gone. England's First success in colonization of North America is going to take place in the Chesapeake and make sure you know this geographic region. The Chesapeake colonies are going to refer to Virginia and Maryland. It's really in the upper south. You could see that right there in the Chesapeake Bay. And the first permanent English colony in North America will be established at Jamestown in 1607. Its motive was wealth. The king, King James I, gives a charter to the colonists, and in 1607 they establish Jamestown. It's set up under a joint stock company, the Virginia Company of London. Remember, they're going to share in the profits as well as the losses. 100 male settlers arrive at Jamestown and they suffer a starving period. These are men who are wealthy, they're looking for gold like the Spanish had achieved. They're not wanting to do all the hard labor. Many of the original settlers die of disease and starvation because the land was hot, humid, mosquito infested, and the settlers were not prepared for this hard work. Luckily, John Smith comes in and establishes military discipline and saves the colony. He implements a you don't work, you don't eat policy, and the colony starts to stabilize. John Rolfe is going to give the colony something to make money on when he introduces the cultivation of tobacco in colonial Virginia. So what's life like in colonial Virginia? Tobacco provided the colony with a cash crop and led to the rise of the plantation system. You have the rise of very large farms. You can see tobacco right there in the image. And with the cultivation of tobacco, you need a cheap labor supply. And early on in colonial Virginia, Jamestown's history, it's going to be indentured servants. They are going to serve as the early labor force of Virginia. Indentured servants basically serve for a period of time, usually around four to seven years, in exchange for passage to the colony. They would work, and at the end of their service, in theory, they would be granted their freedom and perhaps some land. To encourage this, the headright system was introduced, where individuals would get land if you paid for somebody's journey to the colony. And what this ends up doing is the rich end up getting richer. The wealthy people are paying for indentured servants to come over and getting more and more land. And the sad part is many indentured servants weren't outliving the terms of their contract. They would die. As the colony develops, they establish some government structures. The House of Burgess is established in 1619. This is a form of early representative government. In fact, it's the first in what will be the future United States. This elected representative government didn't happen in French or Spanish colonies, so this is unique to the British colonies. It starts a tradition of self-rule, but the House of Burgess was largely made up of the wealthy planters. 
problems are going to begin to develop in the colony. Tobacco destroyed the land. It always kind of required more and more land to cultivate this crop. And as the demand for land goes up, so does the demand for labor. And as this demand for land goes up, people keep moving further and further into the interior, into the frontier, as you can see on the map along the river, the James River. Tensions increase with the natives as colonists move west into Native American land, and that's going to lead to two important developments. One, the relationship with Native Americans in the region, and the development of slavery. So first things first, what was going on with the Native people? There was a very hostile relationship that developed between the colonists and the Powhatan tribe. Powhatan was the chief in the area, and all the different tribes of the Chesapeake region kind of were lumped together under Chief Powhatan. As we already mentioned, tensions increased as the settlers moved west. You can see on the map, the English settlements are very close to existing Native American settlements amongst the Powhatan Confederacy. A series of wars are going to break out between the years 1610 to 1646. These are collectively known as the Anglo-Powhatan Wars. The first one ends in 1614 with the marriage between Pocahontas and John Rolfe. They look nothing like that at all. Peace is temporary with this first known interracial union in Virginia. This was very rare for the English and the natives to intermarry. And another war will begin with the massacre of 1622. Powhatan's Confederacy attacks in 1622, tired of the continual taking of their land and the decimation of their population by European diseases. And with the massacre of 1622, over 300 colonists are killed, which is about one third of the population. The war goes on for a while. And by 1624, Jamestown becomes a royal colony. The Virginia Company of London was bankrupt. The crown takes over colonial Virginia. And by 1646, the Powhatan Confederacy is largely defeated. And there's a variety of reasons why they are defeated, and it's largely due to disease, which had destroyed the population, disorganization. Keep in mind, these tribes were different, and so it was hard to put up a united front, and they were disposable in the minds of the English. They had no need for them, so they're going to wipe them out. It's important to note labor relations in colonial Virginia and the transition to slavery. We've already seen in the early period the primary labor source was indentured servants. But the problem was eventually these individuals were outliving their contract and making demands on the colony. The first Africans were brought into the colony in 1619 aboard a Dutch ship, but in this early period indentured servants were the majority of the workers. So how does this change take place? Well, a very important event to keep in mind is Bacon's Rebellion. It takes place in 1676. Mmm, bacon. And it has nothing to do with the tasty food. Here is the background to it. There was growing frustration with a lack of land. In fact, many of these indentured servants were beginning to outlive the end of their contract and they wanted land. And Governor Berkeley, the governor of the colony, did not allow land-hungry settlers to move too far west. You can see on the map why. Part of the reason is he wants to avoid clashes with Native Americans on the frontier. There also was frustration with the lack of political power. Remember, the House of Burgess was dominated by the plantation elite. So many of these former indentured servants had no political or economic opportunities in the colony. And finally, they wanted the government in Jamestown, the indentured servants and the free whites wanted the government in Jamestown to do something about Native American attacks on the frontier. Governor Berkeley was reluctant to do so because he was benefiting from a lucrative fur trade with Native Americans on the frontier, and all of these tensions erupt into something called Bacon's Rebellion. The leader of the rebellion is Nathaniel Bacon. He leads a group, a rebellion against the Indians on the frontier, where they start randomly, indiscriminately killing Native Americans who had allegedly attacked the colonists, and they also move their frustrations to Jamestown, where they burn down the capital. This is a big crisis in the colony. Nathaniel Bacon, I'd like to think, wore this bacon-covered suit, but unfortunately for the rebels, Bacon suddenly dies of dysentery, the rebellion collapses, some of the rebels are hung, and peace comes to the colony. The impact of Bacon's rebellion would be huge. It would lead to a transition to African 
chattel slave labor. In other words, slavery based upon race, where individuals would be considered property. And the idea was you could not enslave the native people for a variety of reasons. Indentured servants were outliving their contracts and demanding things. They then switched to African slave labor. Bacon's Rebellion also reveals tensions in colonial society between the wealthy and the poor, as well as regions, those poor farmers out in the frontier in the backcountry versus the more wealthy Tidewater elite in the East. Another important colony in the Chesapeake that you should know about is Maryland. It is north of Virginia. You could see there right along the Chesapeake Bay. Maryland is a proprietorship, unlike Virginia, which was a joint stock company, the king gives land to Lord Baltimore, otherwise known as George Calvert. It's the first proprietor colony, and much like Virginia, tobacco plantations are going to be the thing in Maryland. But unlike Virginia, there was something unique, because not only are they there to make money, but they're also there for religious reasons. An act of toleration is passed in 1649. This guarantees religious freedom for all Christians, and it's intended specifically to protect Catholics. Catholics were seeking a refuge from the hostility of England, and Maryland is going to be intended partially for that purpose. It is important to note that this is one of the first laws granting religious freedom to all Christians in the English colonies, but there are limits to it because it promised death to anyone who denied the divinity of Jesus. So religious freedom did not extend to Jews, Muslims, and other religious groups who were not Christian. Finally, the other colonies in the south, south of the Chesapeake region, we have North Carolina, South Carolina, and good old Georgia. South Carolina is going to be characterized by a cash crop economy. Really, rice plantations are going to be hugely important here. You're going to get the development of a very wealthy, aristocratic elite, huge plantations, and very important, African slave labor. South Carolina is going to be characterized by very long growing seasons, and so plantation economy is going to be very profitable in this region. North Carolina is going to be very different than South Carolina. It's going to be mainly small tobacco farmers, very similar to Virginia, but much more small farming centered. And there's going to be less of a reliance on slavery than in South Carolina. It's important you know that the British also had colonies in the Caribbean. Barbados and Jamaica are two great examples. And in the Caribbean, they're going to have a very close relationship with South Carolina. They both have these long growing seasons, and they're both going to rely on cash crops and slave labor. In the case of the Caribbean, you're going to see sugarcane production being the major economic enterprise, and they're going to have a very strict slave labor system to ensure this remains profitable. And finally, the last colony to be established will be Georgia in 1733. It's intended to serve as a buffer colony against Spanish threats in Florida, as well as French threats over there in Louisiana. Its original purpose was to serve as a penal colony for debtors to kind of bring them over to the New World to start over. And originally, it banned slavery and the sale of rum. James Oglethorpe is one of its key figures early on in its period. He successfully defends the colony against the Spanish, but the problem is nobody really comes because of all these restrictions and the Spanish and French threat. So eventually they drop these restrictions and in 1752 it becomes a royal colony fully controlled by the British and it will become a plantation-based slave economy much like South Carolina. That's going to do it for the Southern Colonies. If the video helped you out, click like. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you tell all your friends about Joe's Productions. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them in the comment section. And until next time, have a beautiful day. Peace.